So now that I have my basic color choices on my portrait here and my landscape and, you know, the forms and sketches of objects and ideas on there, I'm going to now start adding some more definition by using just simple marker. And I have a pack of um, all the colors that I need. Um, any markers work. Uh, it can be even the, you know, department store Crayola markers, or it can be the high-end Prisma colors. But um, any type of marker would work because I think it's just important to get with you, get what you can, and you know, um, see what you can do with it. Whether it be something that's expensive or something that's more modest, either or, you're going to make an interesting mark. Uh, what I'm going to do first is just take some line and just start enhancing uh, some of the uh, objects that I have and then if I feel like adding some more detail or adding some more shapes or just changing it completely I'm just gonna go ahead and do it but I'm just gonna start by uh, using somewhat of the similar colors I have ranges of greens and blues so I have a kind of a bright green here and I'm just gonna start to enhance some parts of it pretty loosely and uh, it's okay to you know um, go right in don't be too um, afraid to make mistakes at all because I remember it's all just about experiencing you know how the ideas can form pretty immediately and, and, and how you can work through the decisions that you made a lot of good art or art that I like is art that you can see the decisions being made and uh, and uh, some of the accidents uh, left for the viewer to see and to work with and to acknowledge as you know something that just happened so I'm just you know, adding some shape here, maybe some sort of a added leafing. And honestly, I, I, I'm not planning uh, or have not planned any of these marks that you're seeing. They're just, um, I'm just reacting to uh, what's happening. But, uh, you know, uh, thinking about foliage and um, you know, uh, possibilities of what things could look like. So I'm, I'm taking from my imagination. So even though it's, I'm not referencing anything immediately, it's coming from somewhere. Even though we've been exposed to markers for a long time, and a, a, a lot of people see markers as a, uh, I guess, a schoolhouse kind of medium, um, you know, there's some nice things that you can do with it, and like you know, the wisping and how it kind of reacts to everything that you do. You can't hide much with the marker because you you know uh, you're getting overlapping and you're getting a lot of um, tones so try to work that into the shapes or the design is uh, how that medium works uh, don't try to force the medium to be something else so uh, you know I like how I can overlap and get some tonal ranges and some different tints of the colors that I'm using switched over to a thinner marker. I have the double markers where they have 
two types of tips. Let's see what happens. I'm trying to get this um, these forms to kind of be taken by the wind. It looks very windy in this region that I'm creating. Possibly the Big Ben country, Southwest Texas. Yeah, I'm liking how that's turning out. So I've moved to the background shelter, glowing, radiating spirit form in the back. So I'm going to just start off with some yellow. Um, I'm kind of thinking about it being a, a very intense source in the background. So I'm going to go a little bit more careful with my marker work and just create a solid shape. Again, you know, be working with marker directly right on paper. Understand that those uh, that overlapping will create a texture and or a pattern. So you know, utilize it to the best uh, that suits the what you're trying to do with it. Okay, I like that. Let me do another shape here. Thinking about it, kind of being a almost a mosaic of uh, colorful shapes and then maybe I can tone it down, soften it up with some overlapping of some more of this uh, greenery to give it some distance. So I'm gonna put a lot of detail there and then a gestural, quick gestural motion of the green, uh, wispy cactus hairs um, to create uh, some, some depth. So I got yellow, let me, um, get some blue in there. I think some interesting turquoise. I'm gonna try to go a little lighter. So let me just, uh, I'm gonna start over here. Wow, that's pretty bright. So yeah, that's glad I'm, glad I went to the edges first instead of the center because it's pretty strong, but I like it. It's very nice, pretty intense. And you know, uh, some of that cross hatching drawing technique kind of can be can be left, you know, to give it a little bit of glow. Okay, then um, since I'm doing something colorful, I'm going to go ahead and move to a um, a green. Go back to the green. Same green is down here, but maybe I can let me go ahead and. Uh, See what happens if this center has a little bit of green. I want to lighten it, the green, so I'm gonna just kind of put some some dashes, a little bit of structure. Leave that there. It's a little bit too. And what I can do though is I can add a little bit of yellow, a little soften that green and. Make it glow just a little bit, yeah, like that, okay. Now I'm gonna do something pretty drastic. I got this interesting pink here. So I wanna see what happens if I go right in that center with pink. Or maybe I shouldn't, well, let's see what happens. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Whew. That's intense, okay, I'm gonna leave that like that. Okay. Um, get some Go back to some light blue again. See what I can do with this again. And you see how I'm just kind of, you know, again creating kind of a mosaic back there. That I can do something interesting with. And I think it's a good contrast between that, you know, the structure here and the very, you know, uh, looseness of everything else. So little structure back there and then maybe in the face as well I can kind of repeat some of this stuff. All right now let's go ahead and let's do 
another something that's pretty intense. Let's do a red. Okay, let's see what happens if I, I'm gonna use a broad side, do one swipe. Yeah, once you put that marker down, <laughs> there's no going back. Okay, do the same thing. I'm gonna do a little yellow on the edge of that, maybe tone it down just a hair. I like the intensity. I don't want to tone it down too much. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, now, since that is kind of a shelter form, I'm going to see what I can do with a little bit of brown here. That was pretty strong too, but Sometimes you just gotta see what happens. Let's do the same technique. But instead of yellow, I'm gonna add a little bit of orange on the end. Negative spacing it. Okay. Then I'm gonna go back to a yellow. Hopefully give it a little bit of dimension from that orange to this yellow. And, you know, hopefully you can come up with your own, you know, design that, uh, or sets of design and ways that you're going to structure and using the banding and of the overlapping. I like to call it banding because, you know, you create these overlapping bands. All right. Okay, now. This top part here, I'm going to have to make something kind of this, you know, make some decision about that. But, um, you know what, I think the, uh, the best thing for me to do, or the safest thing for me to do right now, because I can always go overlapping, is just kind of do a yellow. And then, um, you know, I'll go back after I've made some more decisions on what I can do back there. But you can see how that's kind of coming out pretty interesting. And, you know, I have some pretty structured form. I have a lot of this grid here. I can even go back in my watercolor with my watercolor and, you know, get some more washes in the background. But right now I'm just adding some definition like I want you to do. You know, and don't stick to uh, pay too much attention there because disperse the energy around. Um, if you're, even though you can sit here for days, you know, and then that's all the energy you got. And then the rest looks incomplete. So go ahead at some point after you made some solid decisions move to the next section that'll be there waiting for you when, uh, when you are, are ready so i'm back at the plant form the cactus here with a flowing cactus hair and um, i'm just going to be kind of repeating some of the same idea that i did up here so i can get some more contrast then i'll i'll grab some blue marker kind of mimic the blue of the tone here and um, I kind of see you know a, a sun light source coming from this in direction so I'm kind of darkening each of these large flat petals switch to the thinner side and see if I can get some definition. And of course, you know, whatever you're drawing, you know, it's going to have its own, you know, everything's going to be different because it's going to be your drawing. And I'm just showing you how I like to grab a hold of some shapes, grab a hold of some information, grab a hold of a thought, and how I like to work with it. And creative drawing, you know, it really should be 
or you know it 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 can be very intuitive but it also um, like everything comes from somewhere and um, as an artist I think it's important to at times pay attention to uh, the mysterious somewhere um, and, and let it go and, and, and let it take you into uh, a world that you know that moment of time that you're drawing the, uh, the moment that you're just responding to your decisions um, it can uh, you can discover a lot that can then help you with your more accurate design your more traditional way of uh, designing a, a piece of art so it's really just a good exercise so I'm kind of building up some of these forms let me come down here I just small little ones here everything's being taken by the wind okay interesting okay 